As mortgage rates plummet, mortgage spreads skyrocket. We can see on the headlines over the past couple of days, and it's big news, mortgage rates are plummeting the 30-year now at a 647. These are 15-month lows. This is a great thing. But when we talk about the mortgage rates, we should also talk about the mortgage spread. What is a mortgage spread? It represents the premium between the bond market, the treasury market, and the extra that's put on top when we buy you know, a house and we take on a mortgage. It's actually the 30-year mortgage minus a 10-year U.S. Treasury. This premium, the difference between the two, will fluctuate based on economic conditions. Now, right now we have a phenomenon, declining mortgage rates all over the headlines, rising mortgage spreads. How is this possible? A couple different reasons. We could have economic uncertainty. Investors are demanding higher returns, meaning higher premiums, for taking on additional risk. Remember, when we take out a mortgage to buy a house, there's somebody on the other side of that mortgage buying that mortgage as an investment. So they're demanding higher premiums. They see risk in the markets. There's also credit risk. Lenders may perceive an increase in the risk of borrowers defaulting, so they're going to charge a little bit extra for the mortgage. We have liquidity concerns. Liquidity in the mortgage market can decline. There's just less cash out there. It's harder to sell mortgage-backed securities. This can also lead to higher spreads. We have regulatory changes, such as stricter lending standards. This tends to happen also during tight markets. And we have supply and demand changes. If there's a high demand for mortgages, but a limited supply of funds, the spreads can also increase as well. Now, mortgage spreads can act as a leading indicator and really kind of forecast which way the market's going. Here's how. This is 2008. In blue, S&P 500. Red histogram bars, that shows us a mortgage spread. Again, these bars show us the difference between the average 30-year uh, mortgage and the 10-year U.S. Treasury. The higher the bar goes, the more the risk. But notice the phenomenon. In early 07, the S&P 500 was chugging along. We had no idea we we're heading towards a bear market. But notice the mortgage spreads. They were rising almost every single month. And this shows us there was an increase in the amount of risk out there before the stock market even realized it. Now we can take a look at the actual data. And again, every number represents, and this is on the y-axis on the left-hand side. This shows us the years at the top, the one, two, three, those are the months. And these are the average mortgage spreads, the difference between the 10-year bond and uh, the average uh, 30-year mortgage. Notice during a strong economy, 2000 through 2007, we had mortgage spreads anywhere from 150, 160, all the way up to around almost two, but for the most part, it stayed below 2%. Then we hit trouble, 2008, notice of mortgage spreads, 199 in January, 215 in February, all the way to 294, basically a 3% difference in December of 2008, a 3% spread between the 10-year U.S. Treasury and the 30-year average mortgage. That's huge. That's a lot of risk premium that was baked into the cake. Then the market got better. Mortgage spreads dropped down to a 130 in January of 2010. And it held there in the mid-1s, just like in the early 2000s as well. 150, 170, staying below two. Then we hit the COVID crisis of 2020, mortgage spreads increased once again. Notice where we are now, August 2024, average mortgage spread at the moment is a 265. Where does that put us? Right around the same point we were in November of 2008. There's tremendous amount of risk premium that's built into the mortgage spreads at the moment based on what the lenders see, the investors and in mortgage-backed securities, all the different participants, a lot of smart money is showing us that they demand a higher yield because they see a greater amount of risk. Now, will this lead to a recession? Only time will tell. Speaking of which, the other day we launched a brand new project, Tracking the Recession. We take a look at some of the major economic numbers as well as some of the other you know, technical tools at our disposal. 
and we're using your input to create our own sentiment indicator, which we're going to report on on a weekly basis. And I think you'll find what we talked about here to be quite interesting.